Hello there everyone, today's video is all about the state pension. Now I've done several videos on the state pension before, but I just wanted to do another one today just to absolutely encourage you to check your contributions record to make sure you have enough years of qualifying years to make sure you get the full state pension uh, that you are entitled to and plan accordingly. Just read an interesting fact and, I, and I'm going to quote this. It's saying that... Um, Fewer than half of those individuals who have retired with a state pension since reforms came in five years ago in 2016 have qualified for the full pension. So fewer than half of those who have started taking their state pension since 2016 have qualified for a full state pension. So they reckon a million people have started taking the state pension since 2015, but only 500,000 are actually receiving the maximum amount, which is uh, currently £179.60 a week. So why is this? Well, what happened in 2016? Up until that point, the pension that you got every week was not as generous. Um, it was £137.60 a week in 2016. Um, but it was easier to qualify for the full amount. You had to have 30 qualifying years. Then they changed the rules five years ago and said, look, you actually need 35 qualifying years going forward. Um, so 35 years, qualifying years, to get the full state pension. And I was shocked when I read this that only... Half of those people who've started taking the pension are getting the full amount. So I would encourage you to, to certainly if you are several years or even several decades below state pension age, start thinking about this, start looking at it. And thankfully, there is now uh, an online tool. You can go onto HMRC's website, log in for your personal tax account that everyone can have. If you haven't got one, just log in and, and get a code, get a password. The Government Gateway and HMRC will send you one and you can see your contribution record for NI going back decades to see if you're on track to get the 35 years when you, um, when you take that state pension, whether it be 66 or 67 or whatever the, the age will be when you're allowed to, to take it. Um, so what if you have got shortfalls? Well, if you've got shortfalls, you can top it up. You can contribute voluntary national insurance contributions. Normally, you can go back six years. Uh, so if you've got a gap, you, you log into the first time, you go back, you're looking for years that have passed in your personal history, and you say, oh my goodness, I've got a gap in the 1990s. Well, there's nothing you can do about it now. But if you've got a gap in the last few years then certainly you can pay voluntary contributions to top it up. But you may not even need to do that. So, so you, you know, you may still be okay um, without having to top up missing years. Because if you think about it, if you started the credit at 16, and I'll come on to this in a moment, six, the, the number of years between 16 and 68, for example, when you may start to receive the state pension, is... Um, <laughs> closer to 50 years, never mind 35. So even though you might have a shortfall, by the time you get to the state pension age, um, you, you're going to be you're going to be easily um, getting that qualifying period. So what I'm trying to say is, even though you don't have a full contribution record, um, planning ahead, you might think, well, I've got no um, plans to stop working. Uh, for the next few years or decades or whatever, by the time you get to take the state pension, you should have a a full credit history. It's just it's surprising that, uh, like I said, though half of the people who've taken their pension since 2016 haven't had that that um, that um, record. But let me just give you an example. So, uh, and this is something that I've just looked into personally for me recently, and I was quite shocked because I always assumed, I always assumed that my state pension contribution history would start uh, in the mid 90s after I graduated and I started my career and I started paying national insurance. Got my first job at uh, 21 and I've been paying national insurance ever since. And I worked out that, um, okay, so to get from 21 to 67, 68, 
that is 40 something years. Yes, that's well in excess of 35 years. So even though I may have a shortfall, and I do because I spent four years in the 90s working overseas quite early on in my career. So I've always known I have that gap, but then I thought, well, that's not a problem because even knocking four years off 40 something years, you're still going to be well in excess of the 35 year requirement. But actually, it's better than that because I was quite surprised when I looked into my own personal contribution history because, of course, this has only been available in the last few years and I've been contributing for many decades now, 25, 26, 7 years. But the actual visibility of the contribution history has not been there long. So when I went into my own personal one and I said, and I looked at it and it said, you've got full years worth of contributions from the 80s, the 1980s, the late 80s. And I'm thinking, well, what on earth is this? Now, what happened was this all goes back to a government decision in 1975 where they introduced a thing called starting credits. So starting credits began in the, in the mid-70s for all those people who turned 16. And it said that anyone who turned 16, the financial year that they turned 16, they'll get their first year's credit towards the state pension. That's terrific. There's a free pass. You don't even pay anything. No, you're not paying anything at 16 in national insurance. You're just getting a free year, the year you turn 16 as a, one of those qualifying years. Terrific. However, better than that it's not just that first year it's the following two years as well so you get basically um the uh, the first three years as um qualifying years for your your state pension purposes even though you're in you're you're, you're a student so um and that's they were awarded even if um the individuals were in full-time education the idea behind it the government rationale in the 70s for doing this was to make sure that people who stayed at school beyond the uh, school leaving age, which was 16 at the time, did not lose out in terms of NI credits. So even though, um, you know, and a lot of people did obviously stay on at school. Yes, in those days, more people left and started to work at 16, unlike now, where I'd say much more percentage stay on at higher education. Back in the 70s, it was different. But the point is, the government said, look, you hit 16, we're going to give you that year's credit plus the following two years. So that's terrific. So I was very pleasantly surprised when I looked at my own and I even Googled it and thought, what's going on here? Is this, have, have they made a mistake? Should I just keep my mouth closed on this? Uh, no, this is, the, this is the rules. This is the law. Um, so this starting credit went on for decades and it was only stopped for those individuals who turned 16 about 10 years ago, from the 6th of April, 2010. So um, young adults now, um, anyone who's turned 16 since uh, 2010, don't have the same thing. But certainly for, for my generation and, and, and others um, even, you know, um, a lot younger than me, we've got this, this starting credit, which gives us a nice um, few years on our, on our national insurance contribution record for, for, for state pension purposes. Um, so then for university, what if we, beyond that then, at university, there's no special rules per se for being at uni, other than the fact that it could overlap with uh, those starting credit years. So of course, 16 that year plus the next two years, well, you could have, you know, you could have obviously started your, you say, your first year at university if you stayed on at school, did two years of A-levels. So no special rules for university. Um, and of course, a lot of people at uni do have um, maybe part-time jobs or working in the holidays like I did in the early 90s and technically yes that would count but if you've only worked several weeks over the year you're not going to have enough uh, so it's interesting when I looked at my um, NI history my contribution record history yes I had these first three years qualifying but the uni years didn't qualify so the uni years didn't qualify even though I was working in those holidays because I hadn't worked enough um, so the record uh, there's gaps there um, so, so basically, the um, but uh, this is this is a positive thing that you've got these starting credits for many many thousands, or I would suggest millions of us out there that we never knew about. I certainly didn't know about this until until relatively recently. Um, but it's it's a nice um, not quirk, but it's just it is the rules that was in place for decades. So, even though it is surprising to me to read that only half the people who've started claiming their state pension in the last five years 
receive the full amount. I think with a bit of um, planning for people and the fact that you now have visibility on your past history, you should be able to hopefully get that 35 years quite comfortably. Like I said, if you, well, I'm saying if it started at 16, because you've got those bonus years that you didn't know you had um, for those first three years, then gaps at university, then starts when you start work, and then maybe gaps if you worked abroad or whatever it is. But the point is, tot up the years between 16 and 68, um, that is, I mean, that's that's over, <laughs> that is 50 plus years, isn't it? Um, and you only need 35. So you can afford to have years knocked off like university or going to sit overseas. But do plan, do plan because it, um, you know, it's, it's, but the, but the, essentially the, that tool is available for you to do so. So I would absolutely encourage you to log on HMRC, your own personal tax account. There's various other things on there which tells you about how your taxes are being spent, that you've spent 20% towards welfare and 15% towards defence. I wouldn't bother with that if you're interested in that. It's all very good. It might wind you up. Um, but listen, by far the best thing that's on your personal tax account is your contribution history towards what years count towards the full state pension. And it's so easy to see. It lists them off in years starting from when you were 16 and it'll say full year, not full year, full year, not full year. And you can just top them up. And it says very helpfully how many years you've got left to get your full state pension from the point that you that you are looking at it in real time. So a very useful uh, device. Um, so I'd I would get on and log in and sort it out. So don't miss out on the full state pension because it is very generous. And like I said, I'm, I'm quite shocked that only 50% of people who've claimed in the last five years are getting the full one. But with the tools at our disposal now to, to plan, look historically backwards and project forwards, um, hopefully many, many thousands of us will not be in that position of missing out on the full state pension. So if you like this video, please do subscribe right there. And as always, I'll see you soon.